those that's out there and you guys are wondering why I'm not putting them here. I prefer I, I, I really prefer that we use uh, one of these because they're using the same the same V8 engine to run to run JavaScript. I don't want to dive into complex topics as far as JavaScript is concerned. I want us to keep it simple. You you can you if you if you also want you can install Node into your computer if you want to run JavaScript you know externally you can if if you don't want to run JavaScript in the in the browser if you want to run it externally you can install Node but that is totally optional because I understand this is a beginner's tutorial so as far as uh, the code editors is concerned uh, I'm talking about you know you can you can choose between Sublime Text or 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 VS Code and uh, I I highly recommend that you go with VS Code. Uh, and then the browser, I'll be using Chrome, and I, I'll not be using Node.js for this tutorial because, uh, again, that is a that is that is that is a quite advanced advanced topic uh, for for this tutorial. So let us start uh, with with the with, let us write our first line of code as far as JavaScript is concerned. Now, uh, I, I I I had each and every single file set up, so you guys you can you, you can go to your desktop and create a folder. Inside that folder, you can you 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 need to create an index.html file and an and either a, a JavaScript file you can give it any name you want. For mine, I gave it the name index.js, but uh, it's up to you to to give which whatever name you want as far as that is concerned. And uh, open open that particular open that particular folder in in VS Code. So for for me, my folder is called JS. And so I hope you, I hope each each and every one of you can see that. And my HTML file is called uh, index.html, and my and my 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 JavaScript file is called uh, index.js. So with that, I'm I'm more than ready to start uh, to start coding in in JavaScript. So the very first thing that we need to do is to move into our into our HTML file and and generate the boilerplate that are that will be responsible for you know taking us to the browser. So Please uh, give my, give my computer a minute to load the to load this index.html file before we before we get uh, before we get started. Okay, this is very slow. I, the 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 specs of this laptop are very low, and uh, there are a lot of processes running. So please uh, bear with it if you if you feel it it's kind of slow. So uh, inside my index.html file, I want to generate a, a very 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 basic HTML boilerplate. Okay, VS Code is still loading. I wanted I wanted to use MX. I don't know what's happening. HTML. Okay, uh, if that's not working, then we will we'll, we'll go our own way. So let me just uh let me just go very quickly with this doc doc type doc type HTML. I don't know what's what's wrong with the image of this. So let just give me a minute to to, to generate very quickly the boilerplate for for, for 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 our code here, HTML. So that is the head, and uh, and I can go to the body. So uh, I know I know you guys are your 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 image is working, or rather the auto complete future of your of your of your of your of your. Of your VS code, so just come here and uh, hit exclam uh, exclamation mark, and everything will be more than ready to, to roll. So for me, I don't know Emmet is failing me here, so I just want to to go the long way and type everything. That, that just the, the 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 very basic outline of HTML. So here I just want to type H1, and you know maybe just an intro introduction JavaScript. We are not here to learn HTML. That is just a, so that we can have a, a nice visualization in our in our in our browser. And then here I can just put a title, you know, JS or something of this sort. Title. So everything everything there as far as that is concerned is set. Now uh, there 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 are many ways of writing JavaScript. I, I want us to start with with the very basic one. You can actually write JavaScript inside of HTML, but I don't recommend this. But for the purposes of those who are who, who just want to learn fast, or for the for the for for beginners, let us just try to do this. So if you want to tell HTML that uh, the, the the code being read from here is a Java is a JavaScript code, you need the script tag. So inside the inside inside the script tag is where all your JavaScript will go if you want to to write JavaScript inside of HTML. So 
for me, my script tag, and inside here, any 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 code related to JavaScript is, will, will go between these script tags. Now, uh, let us let let us first start by communicating with the console, and we will start with the legendary hello world that uh, most of us are used to. So I can just come here and console.log. This is what we use to to communicate with the with the JavaScript console, and inside console.log. We we inside that inside this parenthesis you need double quotes or single quotes and inside there you type your message or rather what you want to see in the in, in the in the console of the browser. So for me I'll just go with the basic one, hello world, hello world, and uh, everything at that at that juncture will be well. Now to view your to view our output you need to open your index.html file in a browser. I had that I had that already done before you guys came in, so I'm just going to open my browser and view and view the output of a uh, and view the output of of of, of my code uh, in the browser console. So as that is loading, let us uh, let uh, let us first of first of all go go through this uh, this presentation very quickly. So this this is what I've told you. You can communicate with the console of the browser using the console.log method. Now the console the, the console.log method is a very important method that uh, you know you'll be using in your day to day life as far as JavaScript is concerned. You'll be using it to debug and everywhere. Uh, you guys, I, I told you about not running outside of uh, outside of the of the browser, but uh, we, th this console.log it's it's one it's it's one of the few methods that are uh, that are supposed to run in the browser but can still run outside the browser. So I really really recommend that that uh, that uh, you know you 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 grasp uh, you you grasp the, the concept behind console.log method, but uh, it's 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 something very simple. You guys can see that. Yeah, basically just a matter of writing console or log then then between these parentheses you put whatever you want to tell the console inside that uh, inside these double quotes now uh i don't know if if my browser has finished loading uh yeah this is it so let me just refresh to see my output oh god these are the, the laptop is very very slow i thought i borrowed a good laptop <sighs> but uh let us give it time to to continue loading. If this is Chrome, I hope you guys understand. Now, this is what I've talked about during the, the, the results of the of the console, which are, which are going to do shortly. We're going to open it in our browser and view it in the console. Now, the second the, the second method of, of writing our JavaScript is using an external file, which is which which is highly recommended. And this is what we'll basically be doing. You know, in programming, you have to, to organize your code into files. Each, 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 each and every, you know, each and every type of language you are using in your code is, is supposed to have its own file. For example, if if you've ever coded with HTML and CSS, you've been, you've been creating uh, the HTML file and creating the CSS file and, and linking all of them to the to the HTML. Now, the syntax for linking, uh, the syntax for linking, the syntax, the syntax, oh, that, that syntax, the syntax for linking our JavaScript file to a, uh, to our, to our to our HTML document is using this script tag. So the, I know this this same script tag is what we have used inside here inside our VS Code. You know to tell to tell our HTML that each and every single piece of code you're reading from here is JavaScript code, and uh, it has worked. Now it is the same tag that we use to link uh, our external, like for example, this index.js file to our HTML. So this is the syntax for doing that script, and then you provide this SRC attribute, and 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 inside that, inside uh, for this SRC attribute, you you throw in there the name of your JavaScript file with the extension .js. So for example, here you can see script and the the name of your file of your JavaScript file. It can be index.js, it can be app.js, main.js, whatever name you're giving it. And you know, closing with that script tag. So, for example, in our case, the the, the JavaScript file is called index.js. So we are using here script, and uh, inside the SRC attribute, you are providing index.js and closing and closing the script tag. And when that runs successfully, you'll you'll, you'll be able to see uh, the output of your the output of your code in the in the browser. So basically, here I'm refreshing that. Now I can I can go to the console by pressing. I can go to the console by pressing Control Shift J or right clicking. I can also right click and click uh, Inspect. After clicking Inspect, I just give it time to load, and you can see here it it, it opens the, the the I don't know what I don't know what what you can call this, but it opens the browser tools. So you can see elements, 
console sources network. We, we are not we are not interested with any of this. For now, we want this guy here, console. So if I press if I press here console, you can hear hello world. Now uh, let me enlarge this so that uh, we have a bigger room for viewing the output of our the output of our code. So let me just bring that up. So without without further ado, I want to I want to link my uh, JavaScript code with the with the with this uh, index dot uh, with this index dot HTML code, and uh, I've shown you the syntax. It's it's very simple. So let me go to index dot HTML, and inside inside the script tag, I'm going to provide the SR, the src attribute src. Now the the name of the file is index.js, so that is what I'm going to throw in there, index.js. So the moment I do that, I don't need this anymore. I can I can basically delete that. I can delete that, and then if that if that file uh, runs successfully, I can I can go back to my, to my index.js, use the same console uh, console.log method again to. I can paint uh, something else to, to, to the console. For example, uh, JavaScript is fun. So if, if 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 you don't have any errors, if you come to your browser and refresh and you hit this refresh button, just give it, yeah, I know your laptops are very fast, but if you give it, a, 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 I don't know, half a second or what, you'll be able to see your output. So for example, in ours, you can see here, JavaScript is fun. Now uh, that is done. Let me look at this notification. OK, uh, I don't know. I think everything is going well. Now, uh, after that, I want us to move to the next concept, and that is the concept of values and variables. So in your, in your, in your day to day life of programming with JavaScript, you'll be using values, values and variables a lot. So values and variables, these are the fundamental fundamental building blocks of any any programming that you're going to do, be it JavaScript programming, Python programming, or any other programming I'm going to do out there. So let us start by understanding the difference between a, a value and a variable. A value is a piece of data, for example, 32, 40, the name Dennis, Mary, Abu, etc. Everything else, you know, these this pieces of data that you work with in your, in your code, those are what we call values. And, and those those now are, are even the smaller building blocks of uh, or rather or rather the smaller units of uh, programming. So values are stored in a, in containers called variables. Now, uh, if you you guys will, will will be doing interviews soon, and one of the interview questions that comes up a lot and most candidates fail is that uh, what is the difference between a value and a variable? It 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 might seem simple, but uh, trust me, this uh, confuses a lot of people. So we have said that uh, a value is a piece of data, and a variable is a container used to store that particular value. So, for example, if you take a, in a in a in real world example, a variable will will be will be these boxes that you see, and then a value will be whatever you are putting in that box. For example, if you have a box of shoes, a box of candies, or whatever, that box is the variable, and whatever you have inside there is the value. So that is that that is that is the difference between a value a value and a variable. Now, to declare a variable in JavaScript, there is this special keyword called the let keyword. So this is the keyword that we use to declare uh, to declare variables in JavaScript, and the syntax is pretty simple. You just use the word let, and then give your variable name, put an equal sign, and then after to the to the to the right side of the equal sign, you 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 give us the value of that particular variable. So for example, here I'm doing let let first name is equals to Dennis. So Dennis is the value, this this one here, and first name is the variable. And if you want to to see the output in the console. You can just go and do a console.log first name, and uh, and and you'll see the output for that. Now, uh, let us do that uh, in a uh, in our in our in, in practice. So I'm, I'm going to def to to define a variable, for example, called last name. So I've said you use you use the let keyword. So I can go, for example, for last name, and I can put there, for example, a value like Otoma. So if I come and console.log what last name is holding if i want to see what last name is holding and i come i refresh my browser you can see i'm getting the very simple concept to understand and uh it's yeah that, yeah it's simple there is there, there is no rocket science as far as uh, values and variables are concerned now uh you you've seen uh when you are logging the, the water this uh, javascript is fun you have to put, put it inside the uh, double quotes but uh when you're logging this uh, variable last name you're not using double quotes 
now I know this, this this might confuse some of you. Now the difference between this one and this one is that uh, JavaScript is fun. This is a string, uh, basically a collection of characters, and the last name is a variable. So when when logging your variables to the to if you want to see or rather if you want to use your variable, you don't use the double quotes. But when you're using a string, for example, the word Otomo JavaScript is fun. You have to put to, to enclose it inside a inside a double quotes. Now uh, uh, as far as uh, values and variables are. Uh, Values and variables go. There are rules uh, for naming our our variables. Now remember, I've said that, that that a variable is something like this first name. That is a variable, and and this Dennis is basically the value. So there are rules concerned with naming of these particular variables, and these are those rules. So they cannot be keyword. For example, uh, so far we have we have encountered uh, these keywords. We have encountered the keyword console. We have encountered the keyword log. And many other and many uh, and many other uh, keywords that are that exist. We are, we are going to visit to basically visit more. Another another thing is that our variables cannot start with a number. For example, this variable naming here is very wrong. We cannot have one, two, three number. It's wrong. They cannot contain any other symbol apart from uh, apart from the from the underscore. The only the the, the only the only special symbol uh, allowed in in naming variable is the underscore. So, for example, you cannot have first hyphen name as you can see here. This is wrong, but if you do first underscore name, that is very correct. So the only the only symbol you are allowed to use uh, when naming a variable is the underscore. If you use a steric or an equal sign or a or a multiplication sign, that is really wrong and it's going to throw to, to throw to you a lot of errors. Now you 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 are, you are you are not supposed to start your variable name with capital letters. Now this is not an this is this is not illegal to do in JavaScript, but uh. For the purposes of uh, of uh, con the, uh, as far as the convention of naming our variables uh, go, you're, it's 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 you are not you are not advised to start uh, naming a variable with capital uh, letters. Uh, basically, that is a uh, that that has that has to do with uh, that that the, that has to do with something concerning uh, object the object oriented programming in JavaScript, which are which are going to to look at later maybe in this in this same tutorial or or, or another tutorial. So if you if you start a, a variable name with a capital letter, it is not wrong, but uh, JavaScript is not is going to interpret it as something else, apart, uh, that is not a, a variable. Now variable names cannot have spaces. For example, if you have first hyphen name, this is wrong. You cannot have a space between your variable name. Now the, uh, the, uh, here I've, I've given you examples of a uh, wrong variables name, uh, wrong variable names, an example of a good variable names. For example, the first one is wrong because this person started with a digit. The second one is wrong because log is a keyword in JavaScript. The third one is wrong because he's using a, a special symbol inside a, inside his variable name. Same same to the fourth one. The fifth one, I think, is variable name with a capital letter. So JavaScript is going to interpret this this uh, this variable uh, my var uh, as something else that is totally different with a uh, you know a variable as much as it's going to compile, but it's going to give you problems. Another variable, this one is also wrong because it's putting a space inside here. Now, how can we help these people with these wrong variable names? So, for example, this one who is who is doing one digit, you know, he can he can put uh, that particular number anywhere else, but not at the start of of the variable name. You know, this is also a valid variable name. First underscore name is a valid variable name because he's using underscore, and not not any other keyword. Last underscore name is very correct. Now, this is what I want us guys to be using. This the this case of naming variables. This is what a uh, uh, the the developer the JavaScript developer the, the the JavaScript developer community uses. It's called uh, the camel case convention. You can see in this uh, in this my var uh, letter letter m is uh, the, the, this letter m is uh, is in lower case, but letter v is in upper case. So this is called the camel case convention, uh, whereby uh, if you have if you have a variable name that is that is composed of uh, of uh, many words put together for the purposes of readability, uh, the first the first letter uh, is, is is in lowercase, but the preceding letter or the the or rather the preceding first letter of or, or rather the first letter of every other word preceding that particular variable name is uh, is in capital. So for example, here another variable, this one is also a, a variable name consists of consisting of multiple words. Now, if he had put this V in small letter, it would be very hard to read to read this uh, another variable. So that is why uh, A is in small letter and then V is in capital letter. So this is called the camel case convention and we have more examples here. So first name, you can see this N is in capital, last name N is in capital and L is in uh, lowercase and all of that. 
so that is the concept of uh that is the concept of variables in javascript and uh and we've seen an example here we've uh we, we've seen that we've declared a variable called last name given it an, a, a, a value of the name otoma and we are and we are and we are, we are we are calling the we are calling the console.log method on, on this uh, last name last name variable to see what value is being held in there. And uh, when we went to the to the browser console, it ran and we saw uh, and we saw the value was Otoma. So at your own at your own at your own time, you can basically go and mess around with this, look at how it works, and all of that. Without without much ado, let me let me go to the next concept and uh, you know. Because uh, we are we are chasing time, you can see we are we are we are we are already uh, too much be uh, I don't know behind time. What now? Uh, the next concept in JavaScript uh, is data types. So uh, the, uh, the, in, in programming, you know, in JavaScript or programming in general or any other language that you are going to use after JavaScript, data type refers to basically the classification of data. What you are doing here, you are you are you are you are basically telling you are telling you are telling JavaScript or you are telling the computer what type of data you intend to use uh, to use in that particular variable or or that or what that particular value is as far as the data type is concerned. So this is uh, this is just a classification of data, telling the inter the computer interpreter how you as a programmer are intending to use that particular uh, variable. So in JavaScript. Everything is either an object or a primitive. As far as data types is the data types are concerned, so you can break data types in JavaScript into two: objects and primitives. So everything can either be a, be an object or a primitive. Now, an object will look something like this, but uh, it's an advanced concept concept in JavaScript. We'll look at it later. For now, let us focus on uh, primitives. Now, as far as uh, uh, as far as primitives uh, primitive data types going in, in in JavaScript, we have we have seven primitive data types. We have numbers. Basically, you know, these digits 4, 45, all of this, 1 million, 6 million, all of these are this, all of these are numbers. Or a digit or a combination of digits, right? Uh, for example, for is a digit, 45 is a combination of digits. So these are numbers. Now, the next uh, the next type of primitive data type in JavaScript is a string. So a string is basically a sequence of characters put together. Oh boy, what is this man? Uh, let me take that off. Uh, OK, let me just go to what's important right now. Uh, we, we, we were string, so a string is a sequence of characters pushed together. So C, for example, this C is a character and, it, and it's also a string in its way. Hello is a, is, a, is a string because it's a collection of characters. So it's a, it's a, it's a collection of character H, character E, character L, L and O. We have Boolean. We have we also have Boolean uh, data type. These are the, the, the these are values that are that give us an either true or false. It's 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 logical. It can it can either evaluate to true or false and nothing else. So that is pretty easy to understand. And then we have we have undefined data type. So to 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 give you the simple definition of uh, undefined, it's just a variable that has not been initialized. We also have null, which is a uh, which is intentional absence of a value. For example, if if I want to create a variable, a variable called name, and, and, and I'm not sure what value I want to store uh, in this variable name, I'll, I'll assign it to null. So that is a that is intentional absence of value for this particular variable name. Now, starting starting with with uh, ES 2015 or rather ES 6, where these two data types were 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 introduced, the symbol and big int. So as far as symbol is concerned, it has uh, something to deal with objects and sets, but. Uh, those are advanced concepts and uh, begin to used to store very, 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 very large numbers. So that is where the begin comes in, and uh, and basically uh, uh, that symbol. Now, now, um, how do you know the type of data that you're working with in JavaScript? So you use the type of operator to check the data being held by a by a variable, or or the value, the the data type of the value being held by a variable in JavaScript. For example, uh, First name is the variable that we have discussed that, and then Dennis is a value. So, how do you know uh, the type of data you are working with? How do you know if Dennis is a is a is a number or a string or a boolean or undefined or null or a symbol or a big int? You use the type of operator. So, type of uh, we are going to talk about operators in a very short while. Uh, I, I know uh, I'm positive it's it's in this uh, episode. So, if you do type of and then provide the the variable, the variable name. You, uh, JavaScript is going to tell you what type of uh, the data type of that particular variable you are, you are working with. So let us do that practically. 
let us do that practically. So let me just declare another variable here. For example, I can I can declare a, a variable called the uh, okay, let me call it for example username. For example, and put it a value like let's say Humphrey. So if I if I if I want to see the the, the if I want to see the data type of Humphrey, I, I can just I come to the console and I and I log to that console the type of so what what am I providing the, the the variable name, which in this case will be the the type of username. So if if I come here and refresh, it's going to tell me what uh, what these are uh, what this what this Humphrey is. So that is a string. Let me also declare another variable here. Let let me say for example uh, let num just with uh, num for a number for example and give it a value like a, I don't know 456. So if I console if I if I go to the console and log the type the type of this num and I come here and refresh, I'm going to see that that is a that that is a, a number. Now uh, I can have I can have uh, for example here uh, I can have here a condition for example uh, for uh, let me let, let me declare a, a boolean a boolean uh, let, uh, let let me declare something that is a boolean. So let js is fun. So you you've seen that you you've seen the 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 variable the the variable naming convention I've used here. So this is the camel case. So JS is fun. This is a collection of uh, of uh, multiple words, but uh, the rules say that you cannot have spaces in between. So we put them together and we use the camel case convention. With the first letter being lowercase, the this this second letter being in uppercase, and this the third letter being uh, in in uppercase too. So JavaScript is fun. That is automatically true. It can either, it can either be a true or false value. And if, if if to say if that is true, I can go to the console and log the type, the type of what, the type of JS is fun. And uh, if I come here and, uh, and refresh, I get it's a boolean. So at your at your own time, guys, uh, you can go and look uh, uh, and look up uh, each each and each and every. Uh, okay, what's happening here now? No, no. You can you can basically go out there and look up. Uh, and look at these concepts. They are they 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 are very easy. They, they, as far as uh, as far as data types, uh, as far as the concept of data types in JavaScript uh, Go is concerned, uh, it's something that is very easy to understand. Uh, and uh, and I've told you that you can use uh, that that type of operator to know the type of data that you are dealing with, or rather the data type of what you're dealing with. So for example, here I have a variable. I had a variable called my digit. And if I look at the type of my digit, I get to the console, it's a number. So JavaScript is fun, it's true. If I look at the type of it, it's a Boolean because it's a true or false value. Last name is null, I, I, I don't know. Now, this, this, is what I, this is what I was talking about. We have we have a variable that is not... Uh, in, what I forgot to mention is that uh, initializing a variable uh, is giving a value to a variable. So here we have a variable, last name, but you have not given it a value. You have not initialized it. So if you've not initialized a, a variable, its data type becomes undefined. That is a very, very self-explanatory. So you can look, you can, you can look at this one here. I have last name. I've not initialized this to a value. So if I try to to look at the type of last name, I get undefined. Now this is a unknown name. For example, I wanted to have a, you know to supply a value to supply a value to this a variable unknown name. But uh, due to one to, due to one of two reasons, or due to my program requirements, I didn't know what uh, what I'm what I'm going to store there. So I gave it an an uh, uh, intentional uh, absence of that particular value, which was null. So, you guys, I want this. This is uh, okay. If you if you've been researching about JavaScript lately, you've been hearing programmers out there uh, talking about JavaScript being weird. Now, the first the first instance you're going to meet a. Uh, now, as a beginner, the first instance you're going to meet, uh, as far as the, the the weird nature of JavaScript is concerned, uh, is if you look the type of uh, the type of this null. So that is a uh, that that is your assignment, guys. You can go and look at what type of null will give you, right? You can go and look at what uh, what type what type of null will give you, and 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 uh, research that particular output. It's a very it's a very 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 interesting output uh, as far as uh, that. Uh, that that type of uh, null is concerned. Now, uh, after after those values and variables, I want to talk about the let constant var keywords in JavaScript. Now, as far as declaring variables is concerned, these are the keywords that we use to declare variables in JavaScript, and we have looked at the let keyword. Now, there there is also the const keyword and the var keyword. 
prior to ES6, the, uh, in 2000 and what, and 2000 and what, we were using the var keyword to declare variables in JavaScript. So, for example, if I want to, if I, if if in those old days I wanted to de to de to declare a variable first name with a value Abu Bakar, I would use the word uh, the keyword var. But in modern JavaScript, we no longer use the var keyword. It is outdated and depleted. Though, uh, though, if you happen to visit uh, these old code bases, or if you go to the website called uh, Wayback Machine and uh, and look at uh, the website that were created in those days, you will see them using the the var keyword. In in, the, in modern JavaScript, you use the let keyword to declare variables, and when you also use the const keyword to declare constants. Uh, we are going to talk about constants uh, in a minute. So basically, the, there is nothing new to variables. We've already looked at that. Now the const keyword uh, is used to declare values that cannot be changed. An example of this value uh, is the pi keyword. Is the I know not not the pi keyword. The the value of pi. So pi. Everywhere the value of pi will always be 3.142. Whether you are in Kenya, whether you are in you know Pluto, Mars, wherever, the value of pi will always be 3.142 unless stated otherwise, and uh, that will just be, you know be weird. But the value of pi will also will always be 3.142. So values like pi, that these values that are not supposed to change in our program, we declare them using the const keyword. So for example, if you could if you look at this code snapshot, you can you can you can see I uh, I use the const keyword to to assign the value 3.142 to the variable pi why because uh, the value of pi is never going to change it's always going to be 3.142 wherever you are now uh if okay let us let, let, let us have a practical example of this so that you see what i mean when i when i talk about being changed so for example here i can just come and uh, and, and, and initial and initialize a variable let's say for example let uh, f name to denote first name I can give a, that a, a name, for example, let's say like uh, Abu Bakar. Abu Bakar. Now, I if you use if you use this let keyword, you can you can you can you can you can change the value of a variable. So, for example, I can I can come here and say, for example, f name. F name is equals to. I'm sorry, guys, if you are noticing a lot of lagging with this laptop, I, I've explained that to you. Uh, the specific the specifications are very low, and we are uh, and we are we are overwhelming it with a lot of uh, you know a lot of uh, tasks. But uh, let us put that beside. So if I come here in console, uh, if I go to the console and log the value of f name, the value of f name, uh, there is a, there, that's nice of auto complete feature there. If I come and refresh, you can see. Okay. The browser, the browser has hung, but uh, while while it's still picking, uh, uh, I have declared the uh, the value of this uh, the value of this f name variable to be Abu Bakar. Then I'm redeclaring that uh, value of that uh, first name to be Ali, and I'm going to the log to to I'm I'm I'm, I'm logging to the console the value of the of the first name variable, and um and uh, and if I look at this, I'm getting a you know. Ali. So that, that 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 is that is totally acceptable because we've used the let keyword. However, if I I declare a variable with the const keyword, for example, if I say const, you know, l name to denote last name, for example, and I do something like zaf. If I if I if I come to change this l name to something else, let's say for example to let's say l name I change to auth, for example, just a, for the purposes of prototyping this. If I come and log to the console the value of l name. And try to refresh this. I'm going to get an error. I'm going to get an error. Wait for it. And uh, okay, this thing is now trying to fail me. Why? 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 But as that is still once again, as that is loading, this is this is not acceptable. Yeah, that, this is it. You can see I've got assignment to a constant variable at this index of JS line 21 column seven. This cannot happen because you you declare the va the value last name to be Zaf using the const keyword. We are basically telling JavaScript that uh, whatever whatever I have here cannot be changed anywhere else in the program. It's a constant value. You know, constant. It's it's pretty explanatory to you guys. You know what constant means. So, if I try to to reassign that again, this is called reassigning. If I if I, if I try to reassign that to another value, I'm I'm automatically going to get an error. So I hope that is home, guys. It's 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 a it's a very simple concept. So I'm just going to comment this one out. Uh, guys, we don't have a lot of time as far as this is concerned. So at your at your own time, go and look at and look at the concept of commenting. It's actually very very simple. It's a very simple concept. So that is it about uh, the the let 
the let, the const, and the var keyword as far as uh, JavaScript is concerned. So we've talked about this call, this let, const, and the var keyword. They are used to declare variables in JavaScript. So even in this code map, you can see uh, uh, I, I declared a variable called radius with the value seven. So I can you 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 see we we are, we are getting the area of a circle with this particular radius seven and getting one fifty three point nine five eight. Then I'm redeclare I'm redeclaring the value of radius to be fourteen. And that is possible because I use the let keyword, and that and that was able to run. But I cannot come here to to redeclare the value of pi. Pi, pi cannot change. Why? Because you are using the const keyword to de, to declare that variable, and that is what happened. Now, one thing before we before we are, before we finish uh, before we finish up with this uh, with the concept of uh, before we finish up with the concept of you know uh, let const and var keyword, never use var keyword. Var keyword is outdated and depleted unless unless maybe you get employed in a company whether you will be where, where you will be ma maintaining an older code base and uh, you know in that where, where you'll be maintaining an old code base and uh, uh, it's 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 self-explanatory you, you know you'll be maintaining an old call an old code base and they'll be using a and they'll be using uh, maybe var keyword to declare variables you know, sometimes company can be very slow to can be very can you know can take a lot of time to migrate to a new to a new code base. Okay, uh, that was the concept of let constant var. And before I forget, now uh, I just want to give you guys an important note. As far as declaring variables in JavaScript is concerned, it is highly advisable that you always and I'm using the word and 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 mark my words. Always use the const keyword to de to declare variables in JavaScript unless forced by a program to 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 not do so. So uh, you, you instead of instead of doing uh, let my digit, just do const my digit and uh, assign that uh, assign that particular uh, variable a uh, value. So unless unless your code is forcing you to use the let keyword, I want you guys to to employ the strategy of always using the const keyword. There is nothing wrong with using with using the let keyword, but uh, I, it's it's highly recommended. It's a it's a it's a convention in JavaScript, and that is what uh, the developer the, the JavaScript developer community uses. So uh, we are moving well. So the next concept, as far as uh, this 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 uh, okay this episode is concerned, is operators. Now uh, operators allow us to com to combine values or variables and come up with a result. OK, that is very simple. So I know a lot of us here already know a lot of all a lot about operators. If you've been to nursery school, primary school, high school and all of and, and all of that, you already know what operators are. So as uh, as far as operators go in programming, operators are divided into two main categories, arithmetic operators and logical operators. So arithmetic operators are the one that we use uh, for mathematics. That is pretty self-explanatory and we are coming to that in a bit. The logical operators the, this, these are operators that you know we use them to make decision. Now uh, the output of arithmetic operators is a mathematical value, but the output of logical operators is boolean values, either true or false, right? Now uh, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are coming back to that. So let us go to arithmetic operators, and these are the the common operators that that you'll be using in your day to day life. Now there are a lot of other operators out there, but uh, these are the most common ones that you'll be using. So this plus is for the addition. So for example, here one plus one. So we use plus for addition, minus for subtraction. That is very self-explanatory. Plus plus, this is used for, for the, whenever you see plus plus in programming, that is just simply plus one. So for example, 10 plus plus is, is equivalent to 10 plus one, which is 11. So plus plus, it's basically adding one to what you have currently as your value, as your value or, or your variable. Then yeah, I don't know. I don't know if this is visible, but this is minus minus subtracts one. It's it's basically the converse of plus plus. Then you have this asterisk symbol. It's used for finding product. So for example, three times three is equals to nine. We don't have a times in in a, in programming. We use the asterisk operator. Now these are this when when you see two asterisk operator, they are used to to raise to to raise a number. Uh, I don't know to raise a number to a base or to raise a base to a number. I don't know how we are going to put that. For example, two squared is four. So if you if you want to 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 write that program programmatically, you write two. This will translate to two squared, and we get two. Uh, that is four. Eight is two times times three, and that is eight, and so on and so forth. This one is used for division. 
plus equal this is very this is a very simple concept so that is for example if you have a variable called number and you see somewhere where, and you want to do for example number is equal to number plus x so for example let's see, let's say you have a number like 10 and you, and you, and you uh, okay let's say you have a, 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 a variable let's say let's say just you have you have any variable with uh, with maybe some number initialized maybe you have a variable that number with a value with the value being 10 you want to reassign that to be 10 plus 10. So instead of doing this, a uh, number is equal to number plus 10. You, you, you simply do number plus is equal to 10. That will translate to number is equal to number plus 10, right? So uh, that it's, it's, a, it's a very simple concept. We're going to look at that in a, in a bit. And, this, and, the, and the same exists for uh, multiplication, subtraction, and addition. And then we have the modulus operator. The modulus operator is the simplest operator. For uh, uh, this is what be, uh, this is what gives beginners the excitement of coding. <laughs> I, I I really love this operator when I was learning how to code. Okay, uh, no time for life history, but uh, the modulus operator is used for for basically providing the remainder of an operation. For example, if uh, the, the the remainder if if you take five divided by two, it it goes two times with a remainder of one. So the, the, this modulus operator is going, is going to give you that one. If you do, if you do five modulus two, it's going to give you the remainder of this operation. So this is two times two, two because of four remainder one is going to give you that remainder. So five modulus two is equals to one. Very simple, no rocket science there. So I don't know. We can, we can, we can basically do two or three things in Java in the in the browser as far as that is concerned. So let me go to my. Let me go to VS Code and do that. So, for example, I can like, let me let me just declare a variable using the let keyword, and I can call that number is equals to. Let me start with my favorite number. I was index five in primary school, so that is what I'm going to use. So, if I maybe know, okay, let me let me add another variable name. Let okay, let uh, another number. Okay, this is going to be a, a very long variable name. Let me just call a number. Okay, number. Let me call it number two. I'm going to give it a value like a eight. So if I console dot log number one, number number number. Okay, number plus number two. For example, I'm going to get a the summation of that of of number one plus number two. That is very simple. I I don't have to log the the results of that to the console. Uh, the same happens to the to multiplication and subtraction and division. Now let, let me go to these advanced operators that you are looking at. For example, I don't know the modulus operators and all of that. So I'll start with the double asterisk, which we talked about uh, having something to do with uh, raising a number to a number. So if I do console, if I if I go to the console and log what is number two, uh, you know, raised number two squared. So I'm supposed to get the value of uh, eight squared, uh, and if you get, if you guess that right, guys, it's going to give us is that a uh, sixty-four? Yeah, correct. So eight times times two, that is basically eight squared. So that is sixty-four. Now, if I uh, uh, instead now this is what I was talking about. Instead of doing, for example, uh, number two, if I want if I wanted to add something like a, uh, if I wanted to add ten to what uh, we have in number two, I would have done number two is equals to number two plus 10, right? Oh, plus 10. Instead of doing that, uh, we have a we have we have a shorter way of doing we, we uh, that, that is where the, the, the short hand of uh, of assigning of, of, of maybe updating a number comes in. So I can just do number two plus equals to 10. So this one and this one are all the same line 29 and line 30. They're just the same. There is nothing wrong, but uh, you know, in programming, we just we, we go for the simplest things, right? So this is why uh, with this this one was introduced. Instead of repeating yourself number two, number two, you just do number two plus equals to ten. And if I go to the console and see the value of uh, what number two is, number two, and uh, I refresh this, I'm going to get a uh, eighteen because it's eight and uh, number two, number two. We are, we, are, we are telling JavaScript that number two is going to be what you have for number two right now, which is eight, the current value plus ten, right? And, 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 and when we go to the console to look at that, we get uh, the correct value uh, shown there, which is uh, number two. Now, uh, as far as uh, logical operators go, uh, this is where uh, JavaScript starts advancing just a bit. There is nothing, there is nothing big here, uh, just uh, introducing, you know, 
uh, asking for more memory from your head. Uh, asking for more memory. I don't know if I'm, I'm calling that right. I know you guys are doing C. You're doing memory allocations. So um, I don't know what am I even saying. OK, uh, let's, let us go back to logical operators. OK, I don't want to go there. No, 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 don't do that. So logical operators, these are operators that are, they, they also combine variables and values, and, and but uh, they return true or false, right? So the AND operator, for example, it's going to combine two variables and it's going to return true or false, depending on whether the value on the right of that particular variable name is true and the value on, on that particular variable name is true. Now, when I say the value to the right and value to the left, if you look at, at one plus one, for example, this plus is that operator. One is the value to the left and one, and this one is the value to the right, right? So if 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 you if you come here and combine this one and one using a, this uh, this and operator, it's supposed to return to you, uh, or rather it's supposed to give you either true or false depending on depending on whether uh, uh, all of them are true. Now I'm, we, we're just going to come back to that in a while. I'm going to I'm going to show you how to do that, so don't worry. Just work with me in this. The OR operator, the OR operator is going to give you true, uh, depending on whether either the values are true. Okay. In other words, uh, bef uh, instead of uh, instead of uh, complicating this, let us start with this AND operator. Okay. So if I come if I come here to let let let, let me use the native booleans that we have uh, in JavaScript. The the true and the true and false. So if I come here to the console and try to log uh, true, true, and false, if I refresh this, I'm supposed to get false to the console, right? I'm supposed to get false. Come on, that that is false. Now let me let let me add one more console dot log true and true. Uh, and if I go to the console and look at these, I'm going to get a true value, right? So uh, this is what the AND operator the, the operator does. It's supposed to give you true or false depending on what values you're combining. So it's going to it's going to 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 to, to look at these two values and ask itself. Now I have a value to the right, and I, and I have I have a value to the left. Are 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 are, are, all, are all of these values true? If all of them are true, then it's going to give you a true. But if Either one of them is false. Even if you are chaining a hundred of these, and uh, it finds only one that is false, yeah, or rather, if it finds uh, just one that is that is false, is going to to give you a false. True and true is going to give you a true because uh, the the values to the left and the values to the right are true. Now let us let me go to more to to more of these uh, logical operators. So the or or operator is going to give you true depending on whether either of the values the of the values are true so if i have true or false i'm going to get true because one of them is true if i have false or false i'm going to get false uh, if uh, to and i have false and false i'm going to get false and all of that now greater than and less than these are these are very, uh, these are pretty much self explanatory so there's, they're also supposed to return true or false to you so if i if for example take two and one and and console dot log two greater than one, I'm going to get true. If I take two and one and console dot log two less than one, I'm going to get false because uh because true is not I mean two is not less than one. Let us do that practically in our in our VS code. Why not? Uh, if I come to the console and log two greater than one, this is supposed to give me true. If I come to the console and log Two less okay. What is what is that? Two less than one. I'm, I'm supposed to get a false. So if I come here and refresh, see, I'm getting a true because two is greater than one. That is very true. Two two less than one. That is false. That is why I'm getting a false here, right? So that is very easy to understand. Uh, this equal this double equal sign. Whenever you see this, this is just an equality operator. Now, uh, it it has it has a very close brother, very similar to it. We, we, whereby you're going to see three equal signs. So the the the, the double equal sign will we, we'll ignore. Okay, I, let me minimize this one. The double equal sign will ignore the data type. For example, this 23 is a string, and this 23 is a number. So it will it will it will ignore the fact that this 23 there is a string, and it will it is going to return true. But this one this one will take care of the of the data type. 
So it's going to look at the data type and, it, and it's going to, to see as much as this one is 23 and this one is 23, this one is a string, so it's not equal to this one. So it's going to return to us false. Now, if you if you, if you use this bound symbol before an equal sign, okay, this is supposed to be double. Okay, okay, yeah, 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 it's correct. So if you use this bound before the the before an equal sign, this one transferred to this double equal sign. So you're, you're basically checking not equal to. So for example, if I do, uh, for example, two not equal to one, I'm going to get two because two is not equal to one. That is indeed true. Uh, it, it also has this brother, the, the close brother, a bang with a double equal sign, and it's going to give you, you know, uh, the, you know, it's just a converse of this. These are strict equality operator, right? The, and then last but not least, we have this bang symbol, which is used for negation. So for example, the, uh, what, what we had here, if I go back to my VS code, what we had here, true and false, I mean this one, for example, this one, true and true, I was getting the true in my browser, I, I mean in my console, or rather the output. If I put a bang before this, these two values and, and you know go to the console and look at that, I'm going to get a false because the, the, the final result is supposed to be true, but that, that bang symbol is going to negate it. So if it was true, it's going to be false. And if it was false, it's going to be true. So that is what the bang symbol does. Uh, let us do let us do that practically. So if I come here to the console and I look at this line, line 34, so this is what th this is the line that we'll be looking for. This is the line that, th that is responsible for the output of uh, this uh, line 34. So if I come here and just add a pair of parentheses around uh, these two values are uh, true or true and true and true, if I come outside here, and, and use a bang there, not true and true. So the output of true and true is true, but this bang is going to negate it, so it's going to be false. So if I can, if I come here and refresh that, and I'll get a, a false, right? Why? Because true and true is supposed to give me a true, correct? But this bang is negating the results. It's saying well, it, it's, it's basically telling JavaScript whatever whatever you get in in this. Remember, we said boolean can only be true or false. So true is the opposite of false and, and, and the vice versa is correct, right? So this is telling JavaScript that whatever value you're going to get here, give me the opposite of it, right? So if th this true and true is going to give you true, but this uh, bang, bang character is going to negate that, uh, or rather this exclamation is going to, is going to negate uh, the, the, the value of the output. So if I get here true, I'm going to get here to get the output as a false. Now this true and false is supposed to give me false false in the console. If I negate it with a with, with, with this bang character, I'm going to get true. I I, I hope that that is a that that is pretty self-explanatory. And as much as it's self-explanatory, I I highly recommend that uh, at your own time, you guys you go and look into it. Now uh, let us go to operators and look at operators in action. Uh, guys, uh, allow me ten more minutes, please. Uh, so that I, I wrap up very quickly. Uh, I, I, I had a threshold that I wanted us to meet by the end of today. So these are those operators in action. Uh, we, are, we are going to share these resources at the end of the at the end of uh, you know at the end of this presentation. Are, I'm going to share it to the WhatsApp group, the MLSA WhatsApp group, or the CSK. So these are those operators in action. Uh, I decided to compile these ones here so that uh, you'll be having this for the. And coming back and coming back to you know reference them uh, whenever, whenever you want to, you know, uh, get the the grasp or rather the full gra grasp of whatever is going on. And surprise, surprise! Here we have a coding challenge for you guys. Uh, you know, the best way to learn coding is to challenge yourself. And uh, here uh, I did I did my best to compile a couple of coding challenge coding challenges for you guys. So we have this coding challenge number one. JavaScript will judge you harshly. You can do that. And uh, it's it, it, this these two coding challenges are based on the concept of values, variables, and operators that we have so far covered. And uh, I, I I I wish that you guys attempt this. I, I highly recommend that you attempt this. And uh, you know, yeah, it, 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 yeah, they're, they're going to make you you know get grasp these concepts fully. Do them practically. Do them. Uh, open your VS Code. Generate that index.html boilerplate and and run this thing and you know everything will be okay. Now uh, this one, this one is a it, it, it's a no code challenge. You're basically supposed to look at it and uh, and uh, give it and give a 
you know the output. Uh, you just just mention the output. For example, let, let us go through a couple of them together. So what is the output? What will be the output of the first one? A greater than B. So A is six and B is six. So A greater than B that is going to be false. So this one will give you false. A equal to B. So these are two equal signs. So the, this is called the equality operator. I, 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 I forgot to mention this. The double equal sign is called the equality operator. And then when you have these triple equal signs, they're called the strict equality operators. So A equal to B, six equal to six, that is going to give you true because uh, it doesn't put that type into consideration. Uh, A equal to B, this is a strict equality operator. It's it's strict about the data type that are the data type of the value the values that we are you know using to compare. So A is six and B is six, but it is a string. So A triple equal sign to B six equal 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 to six. Yeah, we are going to get that as a false because as much as they were, we are looking at them both at both are six. This one is a string and this one is a number. Now uh, this one is uh, this one is a bit advanced. Console dot log a less than c and a greater than d. So let us start with this one. A less than c, six less than eight, right? That is true. So this part is going to give us true. We are using and a greater than d. So six greater than four. That is true. So this line is going to give us true. I hope you guys have understood what I've done there. I've looked at a. What is the value of a? It's six. What is the value of what is the value of B or of, I mean C? It's eight. So A less than C, six less than eight. This one is going to give us true. A greater than D, A greater than D. Uh, this one six greater than uh, greater than four. That one is also going to give us true. We, we combine them. Uh, uh, that uh, that, that the, the, these are true and true. We are going to get a true because we're using the and operator. I'm not going to do all of them. We have one here that is using the, the bang operator, a very interesting operator in, uh, that I really love. You guys are going to look at that uh, at your own time. Now, uh, we had a very limited time and uh, there were a lot of concepts to cover. Uh, basically, this is a beginner's guide or, or rather an introduction to JavaScript. We put a lot of work to make sure that uh, whatever we are producing here is in the, is in the, is in the, you know, the, I don't know. I don't. I don't know how I'm going to put it, but uh, it, it, it's just, it's basically meant for beginners. So the last concept that I want us to look at today is a uh, string and template literals. This is the last concept that we're going to look at, and then I'm going to hand you uh, this uh, this presentation, guys, and you're going to look at these concepts, and uh, they are very easy to understand. So very quickly, let me use two minutes to finish this string, string and template literals. So. Sometimes, sometimes in our code, we want we want to do more than just logging variables. You know, logging logging variables this way can can be it can be boring sometimes. You know, just logging or two that can be some it can be boring. We 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 want we basically want to have a way of 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 having a real communication with the with the browser console. So if we want, for example, to co to to combine strings and uh and variables or values in our code, that is where the string and template literals uh, uh, concept in JavaScript comes in. So for example, I have here the word Jack. Instead of logging to the console, the word Jack, I maybe want to have a beautiful message like your name is Jack, right? For example, even uh, when you go to, 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 to this first name, Jack, last name, we, we, there, there is that a, like a feel, feel really, you know, if you, if you have a Facebook or an Instagram account, you can see there are followers. This number of followers. So if you are, if you want to have that type of thing, you know, uh, combining strings and variables because no variables can be dynamic and we don't want to hard the code. That, for example, in this code snap, the the first name is Jack. We cannot just come and log to to the console. Your first name is Jack. We want to make it as dynamic as possible because what if we do this and then tomorrow Jack changes his name to something like Kevin? Does it mean that we're we're going to restructure our code? No, that is not going to happen. So this is where the concept of string and template resource comes in. Now, if you want to combine text and variable in our, uh, when using JavaScript, we use this double back quotes, and then inside a, a dollar, using a dollar sign this way, and then inside this double curly braces, inside there, okay, I'm, I'm using a lot of inside and that is boring, but you guys understand what I'm trying to say, right? Inside here, this is where uh, 
you are you are you are basically putting that variable name that you want to work with in the in the in the in the console. So this is these are the backward backward symbols that they are located to the left of one in most keyboards. I, I think it's on in almost all keyboards. To the left of one, you'll see this symbol. If you just hit it, you'll get those what those two those two symbols. Now that, then you you type whatever text you want to maybe a pen prepend or put around your by preparing a pen or, or around your variable name, and then you use a dollar sign. And inside the curly braces, uh, as, as as you can see here, inside this curly braces, you put that particular variable name that you want to work with, right? And if that runs successfully, you can see you get uh, such nice outputs to the console. The same, for example, if the first digit is 55. In the second digit is 90, you'll get the summation of 55 and 90 is, you know, 145 because we are combining them using the string and template literals. So let me just do one example so that, uh, we, you know, we, we don't want to just preach and preach and preach. We want to do this practically. So like, for, like for example, here you can come and say, uh, you know, const. Let, let, let me just uh, have this as let followers. Uh, maybe you have a, 12, 12, I, I don't know, 12 followers. Let us just have it 12 followers, right? Right? Maybe this is little, you know, uh, you have 12 followers. Just look at it that way. So if I maybe I want to tell my user that uh, you have 12 followers, right? So this is why I, I, I'll go to the console and log there. Now I've said that you are supposed to use the backwards. So I'm hitting backwards. It's just to the left of one with those for those who are doing it with me. I hit backwards. There they are. And I can type there what I want. So I can say you have dollar sign and then the, the, the opening and closing cali calibrates. And then inside there, we, we, we inject the value there. I mean, we inject the variable that we want to have its value, uh, you know, printed along the sentence. So I can I can do there followers and then you have this number of followers. You know, you have yeah, you have that followers. So if I if I if I come to my browser and refresh that, I'm going to get that output. You have 12. OK, let me just add. Uh, let me add something, you know, you have 12 friends. Maybe you have 12 friends or 12 friends. I don't know, friends or followers, whatever. You guys are going to correct that based on what you love. So if I refresh that, I can, you get there. You have 12 friends stroke followers, right? So you can see I'm, I'm able to, 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 you know, print, print what I have. Uh, print what I have there, this value 12 uh, along alongside a string of text. And this is what happens even in even in other even in, in, in real world websites when you visit them. So already already you have, you have already seen how you're going to apply JavaScript when you start building advanced projects. So if to, if today, for example, you are building a social media app and you want to make this a uh, dynamic instead of hard coding this number of followers, you just do it this way. So if, for example, right now, now uh, maybe I just do a lot of hard work you know, I post a lot of videos and do all of that. And my followers shoot to maybe 800, right? So that is very dynamic. I'm, I'm not touching anyway in my code. It's just happening automatically. And when I come here and refresh, I have 800 friends or followers, right? So I, again, uh, you, you guys have already seen uh, how you're going to, to, to apply JavaScript, you know, to make your pages dynamic. Remember when you were talking about the users of JavaScript, we, we said that one of them was making our pages to be as dynamic as possible. Right, building dynamic pages, building uh, dynamic pages, uh, you know, using just HTML and CSS uh, leads to static pages. But uh, you know, the moment we inject JavaScript into our code, we this is what uh, we have as the, as the end results. Now, guys, I know you have a lot to do, so I just want to stop at at this point. But uh, this is the file that uh, I'll be sharing with you. You you will use this file to learn a lot of basic concepts as far as JavaScript is concerned. So you have truth and false values taking decision with if statements, if else, the if else ladder, the switch statement, a very interesting syntax as far as programming is, is concerned. We have an a, other set of coding challenges here as far as taking decision and all of that is concerned, you know, and, as, and then as you go by, we have loops which will help you to execute your code repetitively, the while loop and, you know, the for loop, and then we have here uh, the other coding challenges. As I go by, we have functions, and that these three, the three type of functions, uh, they have also been discussed in these files, in this file. And you also have code snaps uh, that will that will guide you in case uh, you maybe forget the the syntax of, you know, working with these functions, right? Even even here, you can see we are using uh, uh, these uh, 
these are string and template literals, but uh, that is we, we don't want to put focus into that right now. Now, there are more here. There, there are other coding challenges as far as uh, 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 these uh, functions are concerned with one, which is very interesting here, the mini calculator. As I go by, we have arrays and all of these array methods and all of, uh, basically all of that. So before 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 be, 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 yeah, uh, immediately after this after this event i'm going to i'm going to share i'm going to share this uh this this presentation with you guys so i think at that point uh, i'm done and uh, as i've promised you uh you are going to get this this uh, presentation in the in the group uh in a moment uh, and then i think uh maybe Humphrey or some or, or or abubakar is going to upload it to the league the, to this link that uh, that we are currently doing. Now, uh, the, this, the, the, the file that I'll share with you, it is packed with a lot of coding challenges. Uh, if you take those coding challenges, you'll be ready to start React next week uh, with React, uh, with Ali. Uh, you'll be ready to start React with Ali. So by the, by the way, React is a, it's a, it's a very popular uh, front-end uh, framework. So please don't miss that event with Abu Bakr Ali. It's a very important event. Of all the events that you can miss, please don't, don't, don't miss the, uh, don't miss that, uh, that uh, React, React series with Ali. It's going to help you uh, a lot. You know, uh, React is a very, very powerful tool. It, it, uh, it has a, it has a very, very, very huge job market as you're, as you're speaking right now. Companies are massively hiring. You know, the companies they're, they're just massively hiring React developers. So. The moment you finish this file, you'll be you'll be more than more than ready. Actually, at at this point, you're actually ready to take that uh, to take that uh, that episode with Ali. But uh, when you when you finish when you finish using this file, you'll be, you'll be even more than ready, right? So, I think at this juncture, I welcome all the questions that you guys might have, so that I answer those questions. I I know that some of us are busy, and I'm sorry for taking your time. So. I'm going to answer any questions that you guys have, and I mean any question, uh, be it based on what we've just done or any other thing. I'm just to I'm 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 going to answer your questions. Just post your questions here, I'll unmute and ask me whatever you want. Does anyone does anyone have a question? Okay, uh, let me look at the chat. Maybe you guys posted some questions there because uh, it looks like uh, no one no one has a question. Uh, yeah, yeah. The the link the link that uh, Humphrey has shared. You guys are you. You need to to join to join that. Uh, you need to join this group. This is why we are, we share a lot of these lots of these resources, and don't miss this. Uh, this React. Uh, I don't know. The, you don't miss this React webinar with uh, with Abu Bakar Ali. It's it's a very it's a very important uh, event. Basically, for me, I'll be joining because React React is very important uh, as far as uh, web development is concerned today. So, everyone, please. Uh, Make sure that you are SVP right now. Amphi has just sent you the link, and uh, yeah, everything is everything is going to be well. So, any question, guys? Does does anyone have a question? You know, maybe you want you want me to answer anything as far as what we've done is concerned, or any other any other thing. Let me give you time to you know, if anyone has a question to think about it before we proceed. And as, and as far as the social media goes, uh, here is my here's the link to my uh, LinkedIn account. I I talk about tech there. You can you can you can you can you can follow you can maybe follow me. You can connect with me and I'll, and I'll be more than happy to connect back with you guys. So just a. Uh, you can follow me or you can follow Abu Bakar Ali or you can follow both of us actually. Oh, what have I even said? You can just follow, follow that, uh, that, that. That is mine and this one is for Abu Bakar Ali. So we were the organizers of the of the event and we, uh, uh, 
we also have a we also have one free inside here. You, you, you also is also it's also really helping as far as these uh, events are concerned. So maybe you can also share his LinkedIn profile so that you guys can follow follow him for more you know for more uh, for more updates. So Nelia Skialo, you are asking where can one access the slides for presentation? So uh, I'm going to send it in the group. I hope Humphrey, Humphrey, Humphrey has just given us a link to join a, a certain group. So just click that link, join that group. I'm going to send it there. I'm not I'm not yet sure with my I don't know. I don't know if I can upload it here. I try my best every day. Even last time I was not able. Probably right now I can I can add. Let me see if I can add it just right away. I think it's supposed to be a publication. If I, if I if 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 I'm if I if I won't be able to do this, uh, you guys are Amphrey is going to share. I'm going to share it to the group, and Amphrey will, Amphrey will be sending you this uh this uh these documents basically. This is going to a lot of things, and I don't want to. Um, let me see. Maybe I can. Okay. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll just send it to the WhatsApp group. I'm not well conversant with this. I'm sorry, guys. So at that juncture, uh, I can see no one. No one else has a question, right? No one else has a question. I don't know. Also, uh, let me share a link to my GitHub account. We call on bubble slash GitHub account forward slash code me. So that is the link to my GitHub account. Uh, uh, me probably I'll put those uh, files there, and then you guys are going to 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 access that. Uh, at that juncture, guys, uh, I think I'm done on my side. So uh, I've seen no one has a question, and that's a good signature, meaning that uh, we are understanding what you are doing. So see you at that. Uh, uh, see you at at React at the React event with Ali next week. I am probably like I can just shed more light uh, on, on the events that we have lined up for next week. After after that event, we have an uh, an API, uh, uh, no, a uh, Node.js API uh, event next week with uh, I don't know, no Node.js no, no with Azure. Okay, Murongi will share more about that in the group, or maybe if he's here, I don't know. I don't know if he can unmute and talk more about it. I'm free. I don't know. Okay, uh, okay, let me just uh, stop the event at, the, at this point. So you guys can live at uh, at your own pleasure. It was nice uh, 